Thank you very much. Um, ooh, there's some echo there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, so I'm giving this talk because John T asked me to do it, which is the start of so many good stories around EMF camp. So uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So basically, I got asked to describe what the demo scene is and give you a good primer for it, which I thought was going to be really easy because I could just prattle on for half an hour about demo scene and stuff. And then I realized nobody has a good, concise answer to actually what is the demo scene. So I kind of went on Discord a little bit and crowdsourced the answer. And I got a couple of good ones. Something something Eurovision, but with more nerds and less singing. <laughs> Which I think is wholly inaccurate, because British people do sometimes win things at demo scene competitions. <laughs> so I went for another one. Screensaver Olympics, <laughs> which is uh, pretty good. So the demo scene itself is more of a celebration of digital arts, things that people have made, and kind of real-time demos are a big part of that. Um, there's also graphics, pictures, uh, different platforms, music, animations. Lots of stuff. Essentially, we, we have competitions around photography, um, uh, uh, size coded demos, and all sorts of stuff. Um, in fact, um, we even have here like a young person's competition in field effects. Um, so we're trying to attach a new audience. Um, so demos, which is essentially where the demo scene got its name are essentially real-time generated programs. They're, they can be size limited or unlimited. And essentially, it's just maths making cool graphics and sounds. So it's generally a non-interactive um, program. Um, you load it up, you'll always get the same graphics and sound come out. Um, everything is generated by the algorithm. Um, sometimes, like I say, it, uh, we started off just having unlimited sizes and then it got down to limiting to 64 kilobytes and how much you can pack into 64 kilobytes. And there's also uh, 8 kilobytes, 4 kilobytes, and then we went down to something stupid and got 256 byte demos, which is uh, quite fun. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I will show you a demo. Do we have audio? Um, wait a second, sorry. I missed the audio on that one. Sorry? Ah.
so that was a demo called Elevated. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so that was uh, by um, TBC. Yeah. Uh, so that entire so demo um, was generated in four kilobytes of data. All the audio, all the video, and the bootloader. Um, and so it was uh, pretty impressive. <laughs> so I will go a bit into the origins of the demo scene. Um, so we started sort of like in the early 80s, which was a bit before my time. So I didn't start in the early 80s. Um, but it was originally when people were copying games and using games uh, through piracy, a lot of the time they would stick their own little sort of like nugget in the front of the game. So whenever you load the games up, you'd say something like Crystal Cracked or Razor 911 um, or whatever the group was. Um, so very much it was born out of computer swap meets where people would go to swap sort of like uh, private games. Um, this is no longer the case. We no longer uh, partake in software piracy, at least most of us. Uh, <laughs> and we've evolved a lot over 40 years. Um, so originally it was more North European scene. Uh, now we're very kind of uh, multinational. We have meets all over the world from Australia, Japan, and uh, wherever. Um, so yeah, essentially, uh, the way the demo scene grew a lot was we integrated with uh, a lot of gaming lands. Um, so there's a, a land party in uh, Finland called Assembly, uh, which happens every year. Um, that has about uh, 5,000 people, so it grew. Originally, that started as a demo party. Um, it's now grown to 5,000 people. It's mostly gaming, and it's one of the biggest gaming lands in the world. Um, they still do a lot of demo scene content, um, and a lot of really good demo scene content as well. Um, but yeah, so now we're completely separate from the gaming scene. Um, we've basically become our own thing. Uh, we have basically lots of different um, kinds of um, parties and competitions. And, you know, let's say a lot of it is still size coding. The size coding limitation actually came from uh, software piracy because essentially the game on the, the disc or the tape would pretty much knock up to exactly how much you could fit onto that tape. So fitting any extra bits in front of it for a demo was really, really hard to do. So it was, um, it, it was kind of like a lot of technical skill went into that. Probably almost as much technical skill went into just getting the demo onto the front of the game than went into the game itself, which was uh, kind of cool in some of them. Um, but now we're completely separate. We have over 50 parties a year uh, pre-COVID. Um, the, uh, the biggest one's up to 1,000. And since COVID happened, actually, it's been a real change for the demo scene because it's not necessarily just based around going to parties and, and kind of like meeting up with people and showing your demos at parties. You can basically sit at home now and, and code up a demo and then find a party online because all of our parties moved online and just show it there. So a lot more parties sprung up around kind of like this kind of like online scene which has pushed us more to, towards that. Um, so we've started having more in-person parties, but we're still having a lot of online parties. There's not quite as many in-person parties going at the moment, but hopefully that's going to ramp up again soon and we're going to be uh, going full guns on that. But yeah, like I say, with a lot of the online demo parties, we're starting to attract a new younger audience because before a lot of it was uh, old men like me. <laughs> And now we're starting to attract younger audience, more diverse audience. A lot of um, women and people from minorities are getting involved, which is something we really want to push as well. You know, we, we want the scene to be as inclusive and open as possible to everyone. Um, we're very open people. We kind of try to pass on as much um, information as we can, uh, where we can. Um, yeah, so. Some of the demo competitions we have, let's say, is like old school. 
We still use Amigas and Commodore 64s, Ataris, BBC Micros, pretty much everything uh, you can code on, you can code a demo on. And if you can code a demo on, you can put it into a demo party. And, you know, we, we really appreciate kind of like all different kinds of demos don't have to be big flashy graphics uh, or, or audio. It can be kind of like just a few pictures. And if it's your first demo, like everyone will still appreciate like the effort people put in. Um, Amiga is actually still one of the biggest platforms we use, has more um, demos released for it every year, which is uh, really cool. Um, let's say, yeah. uh, size limited, 64 kilobyte, 4 kilobyte. Uh, there's a lot going on on 256 kilobyte now. And also we have the TIC-80, which is a, what's referred to as a fantasy console. And what a fantasy console is, it never actually got made, but someone's just invented a console um, that they would make, and it's uh, sort of like old, sort of like eight-bit machine with uh, very limited kind of like graphics and audio capability, and the things that people are coming out with for that are, are really are really good. Um, one of the newer inventions of the demo scene is competitive coding as well. So essentially, we have two forms of competitive coding at the moment. We have uh, the Shader Showdown, uh, which is happening on here later tonight. Two participants on stage, 25 minutes each, and they have to code in GLSL the best shader they can possibly find. Um, and I do have one which wasn't like, integrated into my talk, but um, sorry, guys. I should So this was coded in 25 minutes on stage at Revision. Um, it's basically a shader in GSL. Everything is done in maths. And uh, essentially, it's done using what's called a ray marcher. Um, so ray marchers are essentially, uh, you, you can kind of like set up objects within the screen space and set up a camera. And you send out rays from the camera. So every single pixel of this uh, scene, there's a, cam a, a camera there going, like, right, OK, what do I need to display at this pixel? And it fires rays until it finds something that it hits or it doesn't hit, and then it returns a default color. Um, again, that was entirely coded in 25 minutes on stage, um, which was really cool. Um, again, that's going to be on tonight as well in here. I think 9 o'clock, but I'll have to check that. Um, so the other, which is a newer invention, which is the bike battle, um, which we're also going to show here tonight. Um, so as I was saying, the TIC-80 is, is a fantasy co console with 16 colors, 240 by 136 pixels. And you, you basically have to code um, the best kind of like um, scene you can in that. And that's more of a per pixel coding rather than a, a general algorithm coding. Um, but some of the stuff that people have created in that is really amazing. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to be on after the Shade Showdown tonight, which should be at 9, I think. So but I will check that. <laughs> um, so the demo scene has actually now been accepted by the UNESCO World Her Heritage as a uh, intangible cultural heritage. So essentially, in, currently in Denmark, um, Netherlands, Poland, Switzerland, Portugal, Finland, Germany, and France. Unfortunately, not the UK yet, because the UK uh, UNESCO branch uh, doesn't tend to like us very much. Uh, but there's, there's a whole story behind that, which I'm not going to go into at the moment, but it's very long and arduous. Um, but what this does mean is that uh, we have the same recognition as a, a lot of other kind of like cultures and, and um, sort of like heritage sites. And it helps us get recognition, helps us get sponsorships, and um, kind of helps us get more kind of like uh, brand out there. People are interested in it. And it's not just us uh, geeky 40 year olds or plus who, who are now doing it. Um, because of this cultural heritage, we would able to spread to a much wider audience. Um, 
So yeah. So in the field effects tent um, this time, if you go down there, we're running some demo competitions. Uh, we're registering at um, that woohoo.fieldeffects.party. Um, so if you need to up upload an entry, um, doesn't have to be, there's a bunch of different competitions. Um, so you can just kind of select your competition you want to go into. Um, I would do that now. Um, so just fill in the form. Um, if you come to the field effects tent, we'll uh, give you a show of exactly what we're doing there. Um, the deadline is tomorrow though, so it might be a bit of a rush. Um, but yeah, if you register on there. And then tomorrow evening, we're going to be running the demo competitions in the field effects tent. Uh, you can come there and you can uh, vote on which one you like the best. Um, so you can go to, when you, when you go to the demo competitions, which is starting at seven o'clock tomorrow in the field effects tent, um, you can log on to the Woohoo app um, and then uh, vote for whichever one you feel. So when voting, a lot of people have a fear of like, oh, I don't understand this, I can't vote for it, or I'm not informed. Don't be afraid of that. Like, people just, just vote for whichever you think is the best, and you know, that's, what, that's how we get like, uh, participation in that, and then you can be a part of selecting uh, the best uh, demos that we have. Uh, so finally, I'd like to give some demo scene memes. <laughs> we have Kevin. Um, Kevin was a character from a Space Pigs demo um, that seems to have grown outside that. If you see him, call a dentist. <laughs> Evilbot. So Evilbot started in 2016, stood for election at uh, Revision and won the president of the demo scene. Uh, 2016 seemed to be a very bad year for elections and voting, so yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> And Amiga, so at demo competitions, people sh tend to shout Amiga lots. If you hear people shouting Amiga, don't be afraid, just, just ignore them and walk on by. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, finally, um, come by the Field Effects tent. Uh, you can pick up a vote key there. Um, you can find all our schedule info on fieldeffects.party and register on the Woohoo app, and then um, you can come and vote, come and watch all the demos. Uh, we'll be there from 7 o'clock tomorrow, uh, showing all the competitions and everything, and everyone's more than welcome to just drop by, come hang out, watch some cool demos, and uh, vote on whichever one you think is the best. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>